Right, we've got a really cloudy day. Right, it's raining, it's miserable, it's midwinter, and it's uh, two o'clock, so the sun's going down. That is a 12 volt, five watt solar panel. Multimeter clamps on that. And on this one here, I've got a 12 volt, five watt bulb on the ammeter. And I've got the other multimeter wire with the voltmeter going across there to show you the voltage and the amperage. So I've got 104, 128 millivolts, 134 millivolts just sitting down the wires are wobbling so obviously the wires wobbling make a bit of a difference and it's drawing 1.9 milliamps. Okay now what I'm going to do is I'm going to disconnect all the multimeters for a second you'll hear me doing it because I'm going to put the camera down and I'm going to measure the resistance across that bulb so at the moment what I'm doing is I'm disconnecting the uh, amp meter, so I've disconnected the amp meter and the voltmeter is disconnected now as well for some reason, I don't know why, it should be oh, it's gone out of range, so I'm going to go up to the I'll put the thing into range now right, and there we go, I'm into range now, I've disconnected the amp meter and I've just changed the range from millivolts up to, up to volts and it's producing 10.8, 10.606 volts, so, okay, so you can see that it's in the 20 volt range it's above 10 volts at the moment. I'm going to get the resistor across on the uh, camera, like I said. I'm going to put the amp meter into resistance. I'll put it into 200 ohms. I'm going to swap the leads across into the appropriate lead section. I'm going to clip the wires onto the bulb. And there we go. Now I've got it clipped across there. Right now it's in resistance. It's in 200 ohms mode. And I've got the bulb connected to show you the resistance. That's the resistance. Now, now from that, you can determine exactly how many watts or amps are coming out of that panel. Right, what you're looking at now is this yellow wire is connected to the negative terminal of a 5 watt 12 volt solar panel. Right, and what I'm going to do now is I'm going to lay it down there, around there. That's an LED, by the way. So I'm going to power that up in a minute with the solar panel to show you the difference between incandescent and light emitting diode. Right, so you can see the bulb around the back of the LED. I'm just putting it on there to hold it, basically. Now this is the red wire attached to the LED, uh, to the solar panel. Now I've put that on, and as you can see it's connected. But I've just shown you the resistance through it, and it's, well, is it lighting it up? Let's see how close we can get. It isn't even tickling the element, is it? It's not even tickling it. I'm the same with the leads. I tried to keep it together, but it went a bit wrong. There you go. Then I'm going to connect this to the negative lead of that LED and then I'm going to connect the positive lead to the positive lead there you go, the LED comes on so, what I'm saying is incandescent light bulbs are a complete waste of fucking time because look how bright that LED is now I know that will light up 5 watts of energy that incandescent bulb and I know that LED isn't particularly bright but this setup of solar panel with LED as you can see it gives you a lot of energy and you can magnify this now let me, I'm just putting the camera down for a second I'm just going to go and get you a magnified LED hold on a second I'm just going to go and get it so right next to the LED now I've put a cycle torch this is a cycle torch okay and I know it uses three batteries but the three batteries inside it equate to 1.2 volts each because they're rechargeable ones so you can imagine that's 4.6 volts this solar panel is 10 volts now in the front of this I don't know if you can see inside can, we get, yeah, can you see the LED inside it it's one of those little it's magnified because it's got a magnifying glass inside it but it looks quite big doesn't it in comparison to that but that LED inside there that, I think it's, that thing above the R2 sign is smaller than that, it's miles smaller than that, it's fucking microscopic, it's a little square thing um, you'll have to go on to uh, RS website to see how small that thing is there right but basically I've got a magnifying glass in front of it, it's magnified it by around about I don't know, probably about ten times that magnification is so that LED isn't really lighting up much is it, hey? let me put my hand in front of it you can see there's a little bit of light on my hand isn't there like yeah well this LED inside here is smaller and less powerful than that 
and this solar panel assembly can light it up. I'm just starting, I don't want it to flicker because it will flicker, so I've got to. Now, look how much light there is coming off of that. Now, that bulb on its own cannot light up as much as what this L this LED out, this torch. I can't shine it into it because it's going to blind you if I put it into it, yeah? That 5 watt light bulb alone, even with a little reflector, because we do we put reflectors in our little bulbs and our, our cycle lights, don't we? That bulb there will flatten these three batteries inside here in a matter of seconds. It will drain it in seconds, whereas the LED inside this will be powered by the three batteries inside this for around about 120 hours, constantly. Right, It gets darker and darker and darker, obviously, as the battery power goes down. For around about it's 100, up to 120 hours on flashing, and around about, I'd say, three, five, seven days constantly like that. With the batteries inside it, I've got, I've got two milliamp power battery, two thousand milliamp power batteries inside that, and it will just stay on like that for days and days on end. Now the solar panel, which is powering the little LED here, will fully charge a 60-70 amp hour lead acid battery in a couple of days, and a 70 amp hour lead acid, lead acid battery will power those two LEDs for weeks and weeks and weeks and weeks, but. If you put that little crappy bulb on it, that will flatten the battery in less than a day. What kind of lighting do you want in your house? What kind of, what kind of lighting do you want in your house? Do you want incandescent, dumbass crap, which the God Squad want? Or do you want these dangerous magnified lights? Because if you look directly into that magnified light, it's like looking into the sun. But that's the only way we can make LEDs as bright as, as these. Of course, you can magnify these as well. But if you look at the front of this LED here, it's got a lens in it already. You have to, it has a lens in it already. If I bring it over the top of it, it will blind the camera. Yeah? Bring it away from it. And it isn't blinding the camera. Now, this one here, I'm just going to bring it into the... Be careful, because I'm bringing it into the lens. If it doesn't black out or white out... It could be dangerous. Watch it, because I'm bringing it into the lens. I'm bringing it in. Now, this is magnified. A really small one. Magnified. It's nearly. It's getting close. Getting close. Getting close. Here we go. Now, it's dark. Everything else is dark. No matter where I put the camera now. Because the camera's automatic. It's darked out like, yeah? That is so bright, you would not believe. Don't look directly into magnified light. Now, we've got to have these things, because we're burning too much energy. Way too much energy. And these little LEDs don't take any energy whatsoever but to get the light out of them we've got to magnify it so we have to have lampshades on them which is the lampshade over it so now I'm going to put a lampshade over that and shine it into the light so here I've got a aluminium foil okay so now I'm going to shine through the aluminium foil the light so there you go use a lampshade now I can look directly into that I might be able to see the R2 no I can't see the R2 in it but there you go now I've got a lampshade in front of it it's a filter and I'm still getting lots of light out of it, but it's not blinding me now. I can look into it, and I'm still getting plenty of light to read at night. LEDs, solar panels, battery chargers, battery capacity, or wind turbines and pedal power and everything. But batteries and solar panels are the answer if you don't want fusion power. And that's it. I don't want no coal burning. I don't want crappy gas guzzling cars using petrol and diesel. I don't want ships that use um, fuel oil. I want nuclear powered ships. I, I want solar panels powering my house along with nuclear energy to supplement it at night when everything runs out and so on and so forth. And I want battery day storage and I want power from England being sent across to Australia when, you know, uh, when during the day in England it's nice in Australia. So Let's give, them this, let's give them the power during the day, during our day, and let's have their power during their day, kind of thing, like, you know what I mean? Let's, let's share it around, let's do some sharing. Hi, yeah, right, I've got a solar panel, uh, just for testing stuff with, and it came... It came as part of a kit. It's called a solar lighting kit. It came with one of those low energy uh, light bulbs that you get, but not a 240 volt one or a 110 volt one. It came with a 12 volt one. Exactly the same as those other ones, but it works off 12 volts. Anyway, 
today's a really cloudy day it's overcast and it's really really you know really horrible and it's giving out about 10 11 volts in the middle of the day free voltage not like on uh, offload free voltage 10 10 volts so now it's midnight it's around about midnight and I've used that that light that you saw with the magnifying glass on the front of it okay which I'll, I'll show you, which is that bright it's very very bright it's amazing what you can do with reflections Amazing what you can do with magnifying glasses and reflections isn't it anyway what I did was it's outside and it's pitch black there's nothing at all there's no stars it's cloudy it's miserable it's raining it's drizzling it's, it's awful out there so what I did was I just turned that light on and shone it on it I was like I got my hand out the window like yeah dangling this over the top of it and then looking back at my voltmeter <laughs> yeah and well I'll tell you what I got I got between 1 and 1 1.5 volts out of it which you know it, it doesn't sound like a lot but that's just one magnifying glass on it and that LED is minute that's about the size of that now I'm getting close can you see the dot in the centre of it? That'll be about what size the lens is on it. With, I can't remember this has got, oh it's got two, this, this torch has got two AAA batteries inside it, AA batteries inside it. Now if I put another magnifying glass in front of that, I could magnify the light even more coming off that LED and get even more voltage out of that solar panel. And then if I put another magnifying glass in front of that magnifying glass, then I can magnify the light even more. Right? And if I got the focal length exactly right, I could put a square lens on it and have it literally put a square beam down onto the solar panel to, to exactly match the size of the solar panel and then magnify that again and again and again and again and again. And I could make the solar panel produce more electricity just from that little LED than what the sun does on the sunniest day that you can think of. Look, if I've got those magnifying glasses on this, <laughs> it will also, right, instead of putting that light on, you know, switching that energy, energy saving light bulb on, what I could do is I could take a battery charger and I could charge, I could put an inverter on it, a 300 watt inverter on it, not even that, you know, if it's 250 watt inverter on it and I could charge one of these and around about ooh, around about 50 minutes on a fast charger, an ultra fast charger and the battery, the 100 amp battery which only took a day to charge would be able to charge four of those up about four times, so you'd be able to get about 12 of those charged up off of one charge on that 12 volt battery before it got too low and you didn't want to damage the battery yeah, and then this light only uses two of them and it can stay on for around, well, I'd say at least 20 hours it's, I think it's 60 or 80 hours it's rated, it will stay on for 60 to 80 hours so as you can see at that point then I'm going to use two, two batteries to charge up 12 batteries I'm going to use two batteries to charge up 12 batteries just by magnifying an LED light. Now if that's not over unity, I don't know what is. And <clears throat> I worked that out when I was about five or six year old when they were talking about lighthouses in primary school. <laughs> they, they use a forensic lens or something like that and it, it magnifies the light and you, you put a candle inside it and then ships seven miles away you could see it with a light beam <laughs> you know it, it, it isn't new technology the technology has been around for ages it's amazing it really is amazing so then I made an over unity machine when I was 21 years old I really made one and then just to prove that it works I made it again but I made an electromagnetic one and it uses electric motors but unfortunately because the electric motors have got copper windings and the regulators and rectifiers use semiconductors which are only rated to a certain amount of amperage it burns out 
the regulator over, over overloads and burns out, the rectifiers overload and burn out, and so on and so forth. So I get an over unity engine working, but it burns itself out because I need superconductors, um, hot superconductors or liquid nitrogen to cool everything, <laughs> so I can have a superconductor. If you see what I'm saying, and well, just recently they've just made a new metal. No, it's not metal, a meta material and this meta material is a superconductor at room temperatures and higher so we've got potential to have superconductors at high temperatures now just waiting for them to mass produce it and of course we'll be able to have electromagnetic over unity devices along with our fusion reactor over unity devices and our compressed laser fusion over unity devices and quite clearly magnified LED solar panel or solar voltaic over unity devices quite clearly explained you, you can't disprove what I've just said because it quite clearly works so the solar panels linked up to the voltmeter right now and here's the torch I'm just going to go and shine it onto the solar panel now right now you have to take my word for it here we go on that's flashing that's on I don't know what reading I'm getting there now but it seems to get on there and you saw what we so there you can quite clearly see 12 o'clock midnight England December winter's day raining overcast, overcast cloudy 1.2 volts when I finally looked and focused the beam right into the centre of the solar panel you saw it go between 1.2 down to 0.3 or something like that but when I actually held it steady I got 1.2 volts from an LED just imagine if I put more magnifying glasses on that amazing isn't it unbelievable no that's believable that's real that's no joke and for the record, pitch black, that, 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 that time of night, um, it's putting out 10 millivolts, pitch black, 10 millivolts.